Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel and this is the fifth part for VPC and if you haven't watched the previous parts then I would request you to please watch them and in today's session of the part 5 for VPC we will be talking about the internet gateways and the route tables and I know you guys are interested in learning how our EC2 instances can access public internet and other AWS services and I will be giving you a brief idea of how this can be achieved and before moving forward if you like my work you can now support me on instamojo paypal or you can also join the membership on the channel by becoming a tier 1 patreon member for other perks so without wasting any more time let's begin and in today's session of aws we will be talking about aws vpc routing and what are the types of routing mostly the important ones and we will talk about what are internet gateways and how we can provide access to the internet and we will also have a hands-on demo for the same and the timelines are mentioned in the description as well so before connecting your ec2 instances we need to hold on to that thought for some time and we need to talk about a very important topic that is called routing the definition tells us is that a routing table contains a set of rules called routes that are used to determine what network or where network traffic from your subnet or gateway is directed. So the most important thing that you need to keep an eye on is where network traffic from your subnet or gateway is directed. Remember this point very carefully where network traffic from your subnets or gateway is directed. So this can go both ways like what if the request is coming from an external entity or network or if a request is going out from your subnet as well. So when you create a VPC an implicit router gets attached to your VPC and what does a router do? It helps with the routing of course and other things like NAT and traffic management and it also helps us with connecting to other networks and there are other purposes as well. So let's suppose you own a logistic service and you have segregated the pin codes of the places of delivery and the delivery executives who will be assigned with the consignment. So let's suppose you get a package delivery for Mumbai. You check the inventory to find out who is the executive that can take this request up and then you assign the task to that person. How do we know that information exists? We have an idea of this because we have a rule set that tells us if a request comes from a specific area then who is the one who should handle it or who is the one that should handle it and that is what the route table does and each entry or what we call is route in a table specifies a destination and a target as i told you just now that a vpc has an implicit router and you use route tables to control where network traffic is directed so let's suppose you want your application on ec2 to connect to the internet and get access to services on AWS as well. For this, you need the help of the internet gateway. Here, you need to be very clear that each subnet that you have in your VPC must be associated with a route table which controls the routing for the subnet. But you might also want to assign your subnet to a different route table that you might have customized for your requirement. For this, we can assign our subnets to custom route tables as well. And make use of them else it will be assigned to the main route table by default as you can attach subnets to only a single route table at once but the good thing is that you can assign multiple subnets to a single route table so that's a good part and if we see the visual here we want our ec2 instance to connect to the internet that is the public internet and for that we need our instance to be on the public subnet and what makes a subnet public subnet Yes, if that subnet is assigned to a internet gateway. So the top row tells us that you have your subnet which is now connected to the internet gate with the ID IGW124532254545. And this is the subnet that we have and this is now connected to the internet gateway. And here the way we read the route tables is very important. So if you see the destination of the route, that is basically your 0.0.0.0 slash .0, .0, 0 which actually spans across all the IPv4 addresses and the target is your internet gateway 
that's attached to your VPC. And if I want my EC2 instance to access google.com, we know that google.com is having its public IP mapped to the DNS. For example, it could be 43.22.12.11, which actually falls in the range of 0, .0, .0, .0, .0. That's a public IP address. So the IP of google.com becomes my destination IP. Now, when this request is sent out, the routing table checks the rule set and tells the gateway that there is a destination IP that is in the range of the public IPv4 address and you are the one who is meant to handle it because your name is mapped as a target. So that is the reason we say the route table has a route to the internet that is 0.0.0.0 slash .0, .0, .0, 0 through the internet gateway. So the route table is here and this has a mapping for the internet gateway which actually has the connection to the internet. And for the private subnet, you will have an entry for your CIDR of your subnet as your destination and the target being local which means the instance communication between private instances should route through the same VPC. So this is the one. So this is the CIDR block for your VPC and there's the local as a target. And when you create a subnet, this route is added by default to all route tables. If you have more than one CIDR block, then you will have an entry for each of the CIDR blocks in your route table. That is your local route. And for the IPv6 addresses, as they are not included by default as a part of the IPv4 list, you must create a route with the destination CIDR of colon colon slash zero for all the IPv6 addresses. So this is for the IPv6. For the main route table, there are a few important points that we need to cover. So let's talk about them. So let's talk about this portion now. So as we have already spoken about this, we when we create a VPC, it automatically has a main route table that gets associated with it. And if you have seen the demo, you might have witnessed that the same that we did not create a route table, it was automatically associated with that. And the, this main route table actually controls the routing for all subnets that we create that are not explicitly associated with any other route table. So as we might want to assign our subnets to a different route table that we might have customized for our requirements, we can assign our subnets to custom route tables as well and make use of them. Else it will be by default assigned to the main route table. And you can add, remove, modify routes in the main route table, but you cannot create a more specific route than the local route that is pointing to the same VPC. And you cannot delete the main route table, but you can replace the main route table with a custom subnet route table that you have created. And you cannot set a gateway route table as a main route table. So these are a few points that you need to remember for the routing tables for the main route table. I hope it was clear. Let's move. So I think by now we have the idea of what a custom route table is, but let's discuss a few points here as well. So what AWS tells us is that as a part of the best practice, please don't change the main route table and leave it in its original default state and instead create your custom route tables and assign the subnets that you want to that. By default, the custom route table is empty. And if you create a VPC with an internet gateway on the console, the wizard actually creates a custom route table and adds a route to the internet gateway. And you can add, modify and remove routes in the custom route table. That is the flexibility that we want. And for better reliability, you can delete a custom route table only if it has no associations. So this we can actually experiment this in the demo as well. So don't worry about that. And another important type of route table is the gateway route table. And gateway routing is a term used when a routing table is associated with a gateway. As the name suggests, it's referred to as a gateway route table. In gateway routing, we associate the routing table with an internet gateway or a virtual private gateway. And this type of gateway is very important if you're planning to route the traffic to your instances from a security application or firewall application before it reaches your applications. So here what happens is, if there is a traffic that wants to reach your application, then it has to pass through the ENI or Elastic Network Interface before it reaches your application instances. So in this way, you can secure your application further on these lines. And there are several rules and constraints to using a gateway route table. 
I want you guys to please read them in detail in the AWS documentation as well. And the important one that I wanted to share was that when you think of gateway route tables, you must remember that you can only specify a local or a network interface as a target. You cannot specify any other type of targets, including individual host IP addresses. I know some of these points are really confusing. So let's check out a real time example here. So this real time example tells us a story about a design which has a middle box application which can screen the incoming traffic before it reaches the application instances. And middle block application can be a device or a software that acts like a firewall or NAT or a traffic filter. It is a concept that is widely used in modern application design. And the basic idea for the design would be first you have your application hosted on EC2 instances which is being guarded by the application network interface or the ENI and we have an internet gateway attached to the VPC which lets traffic come by. Here our firewall app actually inspects all the traffic that enters and leaves the VPC through the internet gateway. Now let's understand how the routing table is configured to ensure that our design only lets traffic coming from the internet gateway to pass through the firewall application and the ENI before it reaches the application that is hosted on the EC2 instances. So the route table 1 or the route table A for the destination that is falling in the side block of 10.0.1.0 slash 24 the target is set to be the ID of the ENI or the elastic network interface and any other instance has to be iterated over the local same VPC. So as you can see here the side block that actually wants to have access so this side block subnet B so any destination IP that falls under the side block for the subnet B has the target for ENI which tells us that that is basically has to pass through the firewall app. The route B actually that you see here if the traffic is being received the same way the instance has to access the internet for this the route table B tells us that all the IPs in the side block 0.0.0.0 slash .0, .0, 0 that is basically all the IPs in IPv4 that has to pass through the internet gateway and the route table C that you see here here as well all the IPs in the side block that we have that is basically all the IPs in the IPv4 address list that has to pass through the ENI as we are trying to restrict control to the ENI and all instances are required to pass through the ENI itself and if you try to understand the property here we will get a clear understanding of how smartly we can control access within the subnet we have the internet here and if suppose there are requests coming in from the instances they have to pass through the firewall app and then through the ENI to get access to the instances that we have and the same goes when our application are willing to access the public internet they have to pass through the ENI then to the public internet that is with the internet gateway so you can also design applications like this so I hope you now are getting a very bleak understanding of how the internet gateway and the design actually works so let's move on so now that we are aware of how instance is able to access the internet or for that matter we want to access our EC2 instances from the local desktop or laptop that we have we want our instances to have visibility so that we can have a transaction and this visibility is provided by the internet gateway and as we have rightly mentioned here an internet gateway serves two purposes the first one is actually provides a target in your VPC route table for internet routable traffic and it also can help you perform network address translations so don't worry about NAT that's what we are going to discuss in the next upcoming sessions and AWS tells us an internet gateway is a horizontally scaled redundant and highly available VPC component that allows communication between your VPC and the internet and it supports both IPv6 and IPv4 and there's no additional charge for having an internet gateway in your account so you don't have any charges for having an internet gateway and if you're still thinking about what an internet gateway is I would like to tell you that please don't think it's some rocket science stuff it's just a logical interface that helps you to connect to the internet from the VPC and it's not a physical device and if your VPC does not have an internet gateway then the resources in the VPC cannot be accessed from the internet. Conditional 2 
if in case you have something like a VPN connection or a direct connect to your on-premise office for your traffic flow. So the next important thing and the thing that we are here for is to understand how to enable internet access. So here is our VPC with our subnet for our AZ that has an EC2 instance that needs internet access, in turn has to be accessible from the outside world as well. So for that to work, the first step is to create an internet gateway and create a route table for the subnet that we have our instances at. But even before that, we need to ensure that our instances in the subnet have a globally unique IP address that can be your public IPv4 address that we have like this one here or elastic IP address or IPv6 address. Because in order for our instances to be accessed from the internet, we need to have a public IP attached to that. But that doesn't solve the problem there. You also need to make sure that you also need to make sure that the network access control lists and security group rules. So you have to ensure that you have the network access control list and security group rules allow the relevant traffic to flow to and from your instance. And once you have added the route for your subnet and for the incoming traffic to be passing through the internet gateway, you should now be sorted out and you should be able to access the internet and your instances will also be visible from the local machine. And the note that you see here below to provide your instances with the internet access without assigning them public IP addresses, you can use a NAT device instead. That is what we will learn in the next session. So if you haven't subscribed, please do that right now. So let's discuss some points on the internet access for the default and non-default VPCs. Because you might say to me that Pytholic, we did not create any internet gateways to access the public internet. And we were also able to access our instances from the local machine when we did not create any VPCs and we were using the default VPC. So for this, we need to understand the below differences with what actually comes by default for you to access the internet for your VPCs. The first one is internet gateway. So with the default gateway, it comes automatically with the default VPC. But for non-default VPC, it's yes. But if you created the VPC using the first or second option in the VPC wizard, that is from your console. Otherwise, you must manually create and attach the internet gateway. So the second one is route table with route to internet gateway for IPv4 air traffic. So that is basically your 0.0.0.0 slash .0, 0. So that is also yes for default VPC and the same for non-default that is yes if you created the VPC using the first or second option in the VPC wizard. So the route table actually comes by default which has a route to the internet gateway for IPv4 traffic for the default VPC. So that is why we are able to actually access that. And for the IPv6 that's the third point. So that's a no for both default and non-default until and unless you explicitly assign IPv6 but mostly it is for IPv4. And next up is for the public IPv4 address automatically assigned to instances launched into the subnet. And yes, it is a yes for the default subnet. And that is why you were able to access the internet without creating an internet gateway because the public IPv4 address automatically is assigned to instances launched into the subnet. So if you select the default subnet in your default VPC, a public IPv4 address will automatically be assigned to this. And for the non-default, you need to specify that. So it's a no, and that is for the non-default subnet. And for the IPv6, it's no for both as predicted. So now that we are at a state where we have an idea around how this works, let's see this illustration and understand what we are trying to achieve in the demo. So we will be creating a public subnet with the internet gateway, and we will create the route table that will have the routing entry for the instances through the internet gateway and that is how we will be getting the public internet access and that's what we will be trying to achieve and hopefully we should be able to do that and that should not be that difficult for us and the yellow line that you see or the yellow dotted line that you see here is what we will have as our path to reach the public internet i hope it was clear let's move on to the demo then so let's start off with the demo and here we will be creating a vpc so if you haven't watched the previous episodes on how we actually created the VPCs, don't worry about that. We will create a sample VPC here as well. So you can follow the same things as we are doing here and you can also do this demo. So first thing that you need to do is you need to go to the all services and uh, click on VPC or you can just right click on this and open a new tab or you can click the one if you have recently visited. You can just go to your VPCs 
and you will see an entry for your default VPC. So this is the default VPC that you have. It has a default VPC ID and it also has the IPv4 CIDR. So that is basically yours. So 172.31.0.0 slash 16. So it's a good one, but we have to create our own VPC. So how we can create it? You can just click on create VPC here and you have to assign a name for that. My VPC 01, that's what I will give. Quite generic name, but okay. So 10.0.0 slash 16. So we'll create a CIDR block for 10.0.0.0 slash 16. So don't worry about that. We have the tags in place. We don't want to assign any IPv6 CIDR blocks or uh, there are no CIDR blocks that are owned by me as well and the tenancy will be default. And uh, yes, that's it. You just click on create VPC and you create the VPC. Okay. So the next thing is once you have created the VPC, you need to create the subnets, isn't it? So click on subnets here and you will see three subnets that are all part of your default VPC, but we have to create our own, isn't it? You can just click on create subnet hyphen public. Okay, I'll just create one. So public subnet and the VPC that will assign is to my VPC. So this is my VPC that I've created now. This is the new VPC that we have created. So click on this one and uh, the availability zone, you can choose any one of them. I will choose the first one. But if you want to have high availability, you can create three subnets and assign it to one of each of them so that we get high availability. And we can now assign a CIDR block for this. So it can be 10.0.1.0 slash 24. Okay. Just create it. So if you want to understand more about how we actually are creating this, you can watch the first episode of the demo for VPC. I have discussed this in detail, so don't worry about that. So this is the public subnet that we have. This is not yet your public subnet. I have just named it. So don't <laughs> try to insinuate things here. So you can create one more. So that will be your private. And this will also be in your private VPC that you have. And uh, AP South 1B. So I can associate it with another side of block. So it can be 10.0.32.0. Twenty six. Okay, so it does not overlap. So twenty six and twenty four don't overlap. So it's fine. So we can create both of them. So but twenty six already has like fifty nine IPs and twenty four gives us more IPs. But that's nothing to be worried about. So now you have the subnets and you have the VPC. So the next thing is you want to basically create your instances, isn't it? So go to EC two. And uh, we will be creating our own instance here. So by launch instances, so you can click on launch instances and you can start off the creation process. So here I will be choosing Amazon Linux to AMI. So select this and we will select the t2.micro. Here you have to make some specific changes for your VPC. And you have to let AWS know that you are going to create an EC2 instance for your VPC itself. So here that you see here, the network selection will be for my VPC 01. That is the new VPC that we have created. And here, as you can see, I have two subnets associated to this one. So this is the public subnet one and there's the private subnet one. So for now, I want to associate it with the public subnet one. And if you see here, use subnet settings. So by default, the auto assign public IP will be DA disabled because it is the default subnet setting. And if you want, you can change this in your subnet itself. So here, if I go back here in the public subnet, actually, I can change this. So I actually, I can do this, like modify auto assign IP settings. So here, if I just click on this one or check this one, enable auto assign public IP before addresses, it will be enabled for me. But I can also do this manually while I'm going to select this as enable. So if you enable this one, you will have a public IP auto assigned to your instance. And that's it. I don't think so. We need to do any other uh, changes here. So you have the VPC that is my VPC 01. You have the subnet that is public one and you have enabled the auto assign public IP. That's it. I'm not going to use any user data here. So don't worry about that. And just click on add storage. This should be fine. Just click on add tag, then give it a tag like new instance public one. Okay. 
and then configure security group you can create a new security group or you can use an existing one so i can just create a new security group for my instance that is public sg what i'm trying to do here is i'm just trying to create a security group that actually has ssh enabled for me so that so i can do ssh to this instance from my local computer as well so that is a target for us in the demo isn't it and i'll just review on launch yes that's it create launch and uh, yeah you have you should have your ec2 key i have mine so i don't have to worry about this i can just click on launch instance so now you can click on this id to view your instance also so you can just click on this and yeah so this is now created this instance is now created and uh, this is running and if you click on this so now once you've created the instance you will have your public ipv4 address attached to it so this is the public ipv4 that i was talking about so 13.233.130.16 and the private ipv4 address that will be automatically assigned based on the cider block that you have and this is the one that we will be using to connect to our instance that we have created here so let's copy this and let's go to the terminal and i will try to connect to this instance so to connect to this i just need to ssh ec2 hyphen user at the rate that's the username at the rate the ip address hyphen i and i am going to assign key that i have okay so the key was ec2 hyphen yeah so this is the one so ec2 hyphen key dot pem and if you're using windows then you can use the default terminal as well don't follow the same thing that i'm doing here i'm using partial because i'm comfortable with this and if you want you can just use the terminal if you are more comfortable using the terminal itself and now you just need to hit the enter button and let's see if it is able to connect okay so now as we expected before like i think already you also expected this so this has connection timed out so now we are not able to connect to this instance because we don't have internet access to this instance from the outside world so for that what we need to do we need to create the internet gateway isn't it so let's go and create our internet gateway so here you have the subnets and uh, if you see and the vpc that you have here the vpc that you select on this one so if you select the vpc here you have the routing table okay, so this is the main route table for us so the main route table what it tells us is that all the routes that we have for 10.0.0.0 slash 16 will be routed to the local as a target so these two are the default subnet associations they have not been explicitly associated with any other route table and therefore associated with the main route table so if they are not associated explicitly with any other route table as i already told you before they will be associated to the main route table itself so now we can go to the internet gateway here and uh, we have the default internet gateway that is already attached to the vpc id for the default vpc and you can just click on create internet gateway and you can create your own so my vpc igw okay one so there's the name that i want to give for this internet gateway and just click on create internet gateway so once you've created this internet gateway you see the state is detached right so what you have to do is you have to create the internet gateway and attach it to a particular vpc so i can go to the actions and i can attach to vpc so here i can select the one that i've created so my vpc01 so just click on this one and uh, you have the aws command line interface command as well so this is the command aws ec2 attach internet gateway hyphen vpc id this one and the internet gateway id is this and region is ap south one so you can copy this and you can run it from the terminal as well and you can click on attach internet gateway and this internet gateway will be attached to your vpc id that is my vpc01 so now our internet gateway is attached to the vpc so let's see if we are able to connect to the instance or not no still no luck also going to time out i know that so what is the problem now so as we have the internet gateway but there are no associations to it isn't it because we have not created any route tables so for this you need to create a route table so when you come to the route table section you see two route tables isn't it so these are the default route tables that are assigned to the vpc so this is the vpc id for the vpc that we created and this is for the default vpc so these are the main route tables for each of them and as we already had discussed before that we can create our own custom route table so that is what we are going to do here and you can create a route table here by clicking on create route table 
and uh, here I'll just give it a name so route table hyphen public ig w01 so this is something that I can assign it to it and I'll assign this to my newly created VPC and I don't want to add any tags here so you can just create the routing table now so you can just clo close it and you will see the new route table that has been created so there's the new route table rt hyphen public hyphen igw and this is not the main route table so as you can see here this is not the main route table and for the public internal access to work we have to assign the igw or the internet gateway to our routing table so what you can do you can select this route table and you can click on this and you can edit the subnet association or the route propagation or edit routes so what i can do is i can just click on routes and i can add the routing position also so here i can add a route here so for this i will add 0.0.0.0 slash .0, .0, .0, 0 and i will give it the internet gateway and i'll assign this internet gateway that i have created and i can save the route so the routes have been already assigned here so let's check if our instance is able to communicate now still no what is the problem then now we have created the route table we have created the internet gateway what else is left then the only thing that is left now is subnet association so here for the routing table we don't have any subnet associations yet so what i'm going to do i'm going to edit subnet associations and i am going to associate this public subnet to the routing table that we have here rt public igw01 and click on save so which was now publicly associated or which was now associated to the main route table now is associated to the custom route table that we have so if you want to see the main route table again you can just click on this one there's the main route table that we have for the vpc that we that we created recently then you can just click on this one and here you will see the routes so this is the local route that we have and the subnet association will disappear for the public one and because it has already been explicitly associated with the uh, custom route table that we have here and that is why you will only see one reference to the private subnet that we had and the public one is already assigned to this one we have the internet gateway ready we have the route table that has been set we have given the path for the internet gateway and we have associated the subnet as well so this time we should be able to connect to the instance so let's go and check that out yes so this is the public ip that we use to connect to the instance but if you see here ec2 user at the rate ip 10.0.1.195 this is the ip for the private ip that we have associated with the instance so if you go to the instance once again the instance that we have already created right now so if you see this is the private ip and this is the one that you're going to see on the terminal as well once you connect to this one and now if we want to check that whether we have internet connection in this instance or not we can just do a ping of google.com and yes we are able to ping to that particular public ip that google.com is currently hosting so it is 172.217.174.78 so it is working we are able to get internet connection from the instance so now we will see how we can disassociate these things so if suppose you want to delete all the things that you have created first of all terminate the instance that you have so go to the instance go to the instance state and then just terminate the instance and then i am going to go to the subnet association that i have and I'm going to remove the entry from here. So edit subnet association and I will just remove the association by unchecking on this one and I'll click on save. So I have removed all the associations from the subnet that I have from the routing table. And here in the routes, I'll just edit the routes and I will remove this internet gateway association as well from the routes and I'll click on save. And now I can just right click on this and delete route table so now only i am left with two default route tables and i can go to the same uh, internet gateway here as well and i can just click on this newly created internet gateway and i can detach from the vpc so now it has been detached i can click on this again and i can delete the internet gateway 
I have to just confirm this by typing delete. So now it has been deleted. So you have cleared the internet gateway, you have cleared the route table. Now what you can do, you can just delete the subnets. And now you can select your VPC and you can just click on the newly created VPC and you can go to actions and you can just delete the VPC again. So it might tell you that yeah, this will also be deleted because the security group belongs to this one. So you can just click on delete and click on delete again. Now your VPC is deleted and you are left with the default VPC and please don't delete this one. I don't, I don't think so you can delete it but there is an option to delete this as well. But I am sure that you want to make use of the default VPC to create your instances. So please don't delete this. So this was something that I really enjoyed and it's very simple as a demo and I want you to create your own VPC and experiment with that. So that's all for today's session. I hope you enjoyed this and make sure you check out the other part of VPC if you haven't. And all the links are in the description below. And if you wish to support me, the links to Instamojo, PayPal and Patreon are right in the description as well. So until next time, it's Pythalic signing off.